Well, good evening. Monday evening, 7 p.m. And here I am with my reflection. Excuse me while I just uh, sort my jewellery out here. Right. Um, what I'm going to do this one is man shall not live by bread alone. Now, um, I don't know about you, but uh, I do like my food. Um, I do get what's it called hangry. Okay, that's when I'm hungry and a bit grumpy. Look at something to eat. I like dearly thick man. Look at something to eat. My wife is pretty good. She'll say, I want to chat tonight. We'll have it after tea. She's not down, you know. Anyhow, when I was mentioning this to my wife, man shall not live by bread alone. Uh, my wife said, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is what she came up with. Hope you enjoy this one. Yeah, man shall not live by bread alone. Thou shalt have bacon in it. Yep, that's me. I like my bacon every morning. Yep, got to have a piece of bacon in the morning. I like my bacon in the morning. Coffee, my bacon, I enjoy that. I enjoy my food and what have you. But, but, when we think about it, it's not the main thing that we need, is it? It's not really the main thing. You know, we can eat food because we implicate ourselves, can't we? Oh, I'm feeling hungry, I'm feeling this, oh, I'm going to go and get some chips down there, I'm going to eat this, I'm going to eat... We call it junk food, don't we, and things like that, because we enjoy joy food. We sit there stuffing our faces and enjoying it and what have you. But when it's gone, it's gone. That's it. Now, Jesus had this type of uh, thing that was going on, and uh, I'll show you where the first part, where this comes from, man shall not live by bread alone. Okay. It's here where Jesus is tested in the wilderness, which is Matthew 4. And he says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. I'd be pretty hungry, I'll tell you. The tempter came to him and said, If you're the Son of Man, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, I'll be pretty tempted to change those stones into baked butties, I'll tell you. But that's what he said. It was not mattered. There was two things that was happening here. Number one, he wasn't going to be tempted to fall away from what he knew. What he knew was correct. He wasn't going to be tempted to fall away from that. That's the first thing. He wasn't going to be tempted. And he wanted to tell the truth. The truth was that it's not the food that really matters. Okay? It's not that. It's every word that comes from the mouth of God that really matters. So let's have a look at where he picked this from, because if you look in the NIV, there's a little footnote that shows you there for it. And it comes from Deuteronomy 8, uh, verses, um, verse 3, actually. Now, what this was, this was uh, reading out the, the, the law to, to the Israelites and talking about what was happening. And this is what, I've, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness those 40 years. He humbled and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Now, if we can imagine that, this day and age, we rely on lots of things of ourselves. A friend of mine was saying the other day that we have to have faith in ourselves. We rely on all the things around us, the practical things around us, to make sure we've got enough money, to make sure that there's food in the shops and this and this. Haven't we noticed over the past two years that this has been challenged? That this has been challenged? The things that we've got have been very much challenged. And this was a situation where there was no food, there was nothing. And God provided, actually provided for these people through there. You believe it or not, but that's the position it was in. And what we can learn from it is that sometimes when those things are taken away, those practical things, that bread, that real bread, that bread that we eat, or the food that we eat is taken away, or things are taken away, we have to adapt. We have to realise that that's not what really matters. A good friend of mine, who people in Louth will know, um, from Paul Hugel, will say, consume less, be more. Be more of you and consume less of the stuff you don't need. 
This is the bread that Jesus was talking about. Now, if we can move on there. Sorry, I've got the uh, scripture wrong on there. Haven't I? One thing I didn't alter. Never mind. I apologise about that. Okay, let's look at where Jesus talks about him being the bread of life. Now, let's bear in mind where this is. This is in um, uh, John 6, okay, uh, verse 25. Uh, sorry, John 6 um, itself. He starts at the beginning by talking about the feeding of the 5,000. What he's done is he's practically fed 5,000 people with two loaves and five fishes. Okay, he's practically fed them. He's gone through this and they've wondered what's going on and they're all arguing about it. And he does it. Wow, you know, he's fed them. Wow. I mean, these people must have thought, wow, this man's done just like he did with the wedding at Canaan. Didn't he? he provided the wine. Wow, the best to last. Wow, this man's brilliant. Wow, he's fantastic because he provided. Yes, and then he comes on and he walks on the water where they see him do that. Later on, and then they found him at the other side of the lake. They asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus ended, truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, because of the loaves, because you ate loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they ask him, what we must do to do the works God requires? The work God requires is this, believe in the one who has sent him. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have eternal life. Believe on him. That's the first work that we need to do, is believe on him. Then they ask him, what chance will you give us that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and as it's written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said, Always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and you still don't believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given me, but raise them up in the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Now these Jews started to complain about, what's he talking about, bread of heaven? I am the bread of heaven. Is this not... Is this Jesus is it Jesus, son of Mary. You know, the guy from Nazareth, who is he talking about? How can he say, I came down from heaven, what's he talking about? Oh, they were getting a little bit normal, really, aren't they? And he told them, stop grumbling among yourselves. No one come to me unless the fa Father has sent them, draws them. I will raise them up on the last day. It is written in the prophets. Then they will be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he ha has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness like they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my fresh flesh, which I give for the life of the world. And then the Jews just carried on to complain about this. What's going on? How can he give flesh to eat? Very to you, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. 
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my body is drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father, and so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna, died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is what he was talking about. He was talking about that he gave his life for us. He gave his life for us that we can match, we can come back to a perfect loving God. We can come back because of him who paid that price. And his bread, the bread that we take at communion, is his body. The blood that we take, the wine that we take, or whatever drink we take at communion, is his blood called for his. He is the bread of life. Well, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something from it. At the end of the day, there is a choice for all of us. Um, a lot of us fear death. A lot of people fear death because they don't want to lose what's going off in this world. And some people fear this world because they see what's going on. Oh, what's happening? What's going to happen to us? Oh, my goodness, we've had it. For myself and many Christians who believe in this bread of life, who believe in Jesus Christ, that he died for us, and God Almighty, the God of the natural, beautiful, living world, has got a place for us. And we're waiting for him to come back again. When he comes back again, praise God, I'm not bothered about dying. I don't want to die because I've got people that I can help and a job I can do here. And I'm really pleased to be able to do that job here on earth. And that's what gives me strength because of that bread of life. Jesus Christ said, I am the bread of life. So till next week, I just want to say a big thank you. I hope you've enjoyed something of it. And I hope you might be able to join me again next week. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.